What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Kenny For Real, where we talk about basketball. Now, today is like a football day, as you can see up the top. These games are all live as I record, and I don't care about a single one of them because I have an NBA article for you guys. One surprise trade idea for every NBA team. Interesting stuff. Now, what we do around here is we talk about basketball, and we react to trades articles like this, and I love them. I love them. Shout out to Grant Hughes. I don't agree with everything or even half of the things or even a third of the things that these articles present, but I think it's always fun to kind of talk about different trade packages because for me that's one of the most exciting things about building a team in any sport is trying to maximize players and, and get assets and flip them if you're a fan of the first channel so the cover athlete of this article is john wall which is interesting who's taking on that contract find out in this article all right so starting off with the atlanta hawks Derek White becomes Trey Young's bodyguard. This is Derek White to the San Antonio Spurs for Kevin Hurdle one for one trade straight up um Sure, Derek White has a definitely a, a much better defender than Kevin Herter, um, but I think Derek White is one of those players that I could see the Spurs being like, nah, we want to just give him one more year to see exactly what we got from him, because we see periods of time where he looks amazing, and we also see periods of time where he's just cool, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know if they want to give up on him just yet to get back another guy like Kevin Herter, who is, of course, good, a great shooter, and a, a bright NBA future, but I don't know if they do this trade right here, right now. Um, White is among the NBA's best shot blocking guards. He must be Dwayne Wade 2.0. Uh, about a little above league average from deep from three, so on, so, so on and so forth. I don't think there's a trade that either of the two teams do um, at this point in time. Time to get defensive for the Boston Celtics. Oh, this is a trade that I've seen on Twitter. So just have Rudy Gobert going to Boston for Gordon Hayward, Daniel Tice, and three first-round picks. These are all the picks that the Boston Celtics have this year, which is 14, 26, and 30. Now, people are expecting that the Boston Celtics to use two or, or all three of these picks to try to jump up to the top 10, and we'll see if that happens once draft night comes. But in this scenario, they're getting Rudy Gobert in return, and um, he, fix, he fixes a problem that they kind of have to some extent, and that's like the rim protection. They were still a top 10 defense and a top 10 offense, so it's not like they really, really needed um, – paint protection as much as that but i don't know i don't know about this trade um i don't hate it for both sides but i definitely don't see it as a realistic option for either side either if that makes sense next we have the brooklyn Nets third star inbound we have victor Ladipo getting traded for karis levert and garrett temple another trade that we've seen in previous articles i don't want to go too deep into it but i understand this trade from both sides um if the brooklyn nets want to take a chance on victor Depot, a guy who can play on and off ball and be successful and then the the uh the pacers get a younger guy in karis levert who has tremendous upside you know karis levert is a guy that does need the ball in his hands a lot to be successful um, so he doesn't really fit in Brooklyn for that case, at least not right now. And Victor Depot would fit that. And he defends better than any of the guys associated in his trade. So we have Kevin Durant, Kyrie, and now the primary guard defender of Victor Depot. I would like this. I like this trade. I like this trade. If the Pacers are trading Victor Depot and getting back Harris LeVert right now, I think that they would be relatively happy considering that we it's still speculation whether Victor Oladipo wants to be there or not and it's still speculation on if he's still a very good NBA player or not so if you get back a guy like Karis LeVers on the contract for a few more years and he's relatively young I think you'll be walking out thinking that you won maybe not though then we have the Charlotte Hornets trading a number three pig for Aaron Gordon in 15. So they're trading down in the scenario and getting back Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon is a guy that I, I really, really want to see in a new situation. I think he is a very solid NBA player, but I think a change of scenery can boost him over that, right? He doesn't know who he is just yet. And of course, that means that we as fans don't really know who he is just yet. Um, but do the Charlotte Hornets trade three for that? I doubt. I mean, he does raise their ceiling for a team that's like, okay, they got some pieces there. And this will basically be if like the Orlando Magic really love somebody at three and they want to blow it up, or, or the Charlotte Hornets don't love anybody at three. Now, the reason why the Charlotte Hornets maybe don't do this is because at three, you still have a chance of drafting a guy that can turn into a superstar. I know off the top, there's nobody in this draft that can immediately come in and be a superstar. At least that's what we see right now. But that doesn't mean the third overall pick can't turn into a star type player a couple years down the line. So personally, if I was Charlotte, I will hold on to number three and actually draft with it because... Well, bringing in Aaron Gordon sure raises your ceiling a little bit, but it doesn't really... I, I would rather take the shot at getting the star player than getting Aaron Gordon personally. But if I... Hey, but if I'm the Orlando Magic, I do the zeal in the heartbeat. I do. I do. 
Though Aaron Gordon is good, I think he does need to change the scenery. And I can get the number three pick. I'll do that deal in the heartbeat if I'm the Orlando Magic. The Bulls swing big for Ben Simmons. My Bulls? Hold on. We get Ben Simmons in 21 for Zach Levine, Larry Market in four. Um, ask, ask anybody uh, my opinion on the Bulls. I don't think anybody on this roster should be untouchable. So I'm listening to every offer. But the reason I wouldn't do this deal if I'm the Bulls is this leads us with what? Ben Simmons, Kobe White, and Wendell Carter. Otto Porter and Thaddeus Young. That's our start at five. I don't love it. I, I don't love it. Sure, we get Ben Simmons, who could be, like, really, really good at times. Um, but it doesn't leave us with much to, like, we probably still wouldn't be a playoff team, right? How much has Ben Simmons raised your ceiling? Defensively, he raises your ceiling a lot. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. If the Bulls put off this trade today, I wouldn't. I would have to see it on the court to have an opinion on it. Um, for the 76ers... I mean, I don't really like it. I'm skipping. I don't really like that trade for either side. The Cleveland Cavaliers moving up the board. So, this is Nicholas Batum, and they get back three. So, in this scenario, they're trading three again. We're talking about Charlotte. But only trading down two spots, and they're getting Andre Drummond, who will be on the last year of his contract if he opts in. Interesting. Now, if the Charlotte Hornets don't see anybody at three they absolutely love or they love somebody that they can get at five, this is a deal worth making. The sh everything I've read, the Charlotte Hornets have loved Drummond for a long time. They offered him a contract when he was a free agent last time. And they, for some reason, Michael Jordan loves the idea of having a big rebounding center. I don't know why. And if that's the case, it's a deal that they would do 100 times out of 100. And if I'm the Cleveland Cavaliers, I'm trading Drummond. Yeah, I would trade Drummond to move up to three, 100%. So this is only contingent on, on the idea that the Charlotte Hornets don't love any of the top three prospects and want to move back to five because they like somebody better. But if that's the case, I would do this deal. I would do that deal. Next, more shooting pleas for the Dallas Mavericks. J.J. Redick in 13 for Maxi Kleba in 12. 18, bro. Maxi Kleep is a guy that would look very, very nice alongside Zion Williamson. And there's like a log gem in backcourt with the Pelicans. I think the Key Alexander Walker is a guy that should definitely be getting minutes, but he just doesn't. It's just too many guards out there. I like this trade. I do. I legitimately like this trade. Deal. I think it's a deal that can be done. Wow. I think it's a good trade for both sides. I do. I honestly do. All right, the Denver Nuggets. Here's the trade. We've talked about this trade a thousand times. I'm going to skip it. Go to any of the other trade articles because this trade pops up in every single one of them. Next. Ooh, Detroit. Pi Hold on. Okay, Detroit Pistons acquire CJ and pick number 16 for Blake Griffin and seven. But why, Detroit? You know? But why? What does this do? You're still going to be bad if you bring in CJ. You're still going to be bad. Deard Rose, CJ Seku, and like Tony Snell. And no, nah, I'm sorry. Hard pass. Hard pass. This doesn't improve anything for either of the two teams. So I'm going to say hard pass. We don't know what Blake Griffin is at this moment. So I'm not trading CJ for that. But I mean, you get number seven. I don't do this trade. No. No, 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 no. Why does Detroit? Detroit just needs to be thinking hard rebuild, personally. That's what I think. The core cracks. Oh, oh. The Warriors acquire Drew Holiday and Miles Turner and Victor. Le the league does not want to see this. The league, I, I'm, I am the league in this situation. I don't want to see Steph Curry, Clay Thompson on a team with Drew Holiday, Miles Turner, Victor Lodipo. But okay, let's see what's going on. The Pelicans get Wiggins and that top three protected pick that the Timberwolves gave up in the D'Angelo Russell trade. And then the Pacers get number two and Draymond. So in this situation, Draymond runs the four for them. So bonus moves over to the five. You get the number two pick. That's either LaMelo or, or, or Anthony Edwards or Wiseman, whoever you want to pick. I don't like this deal specifically because the Warriors get too damn good. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see the Warriors get that good again. I'm sorry. Uh, but it's a very interesting trade. I mean, so the Pelicans will be giving up Miles. I mean, Drew Holiday. And in return, they're getting Wiggs. Who I don't like the fit with Wiggs, Zion, and Brandon Ingram and Lonzo. I don't like that fit at all. But you might do the deal because you get this pick from Minnesota. And that pick from Minnesota is going to end up being pretty valuable long term. But you're also getting a big old contract in Wiggs. So I don't think the Pelicans look at this and think. But this pick might be so valuable. That you're willing to take on Wiggins' contract for the last couple seasons. If this trade happened monster deal i don't want the warriors being that good so i'm gonna say no 
we talk about parity in the NBA right now. If this trade happens, there is no parity. It's not. Because one of these guards is coming off the bench. Drew Holiday, Victor Oladipo, Klay Thompson, Steph Curry are coming off the bench. So one of these two guys will be coming off the bench. And, like, that is your sixth man is ridiculous. Okay, here we go. Spencer Dinwiddie and Karis LeVert, Jared Allen, Kerr Roots, and 19 for James Harden in the first. Well, I'm sorry. 19th pick in another first for James Harden. So we got Kyrie, James Harden, and Kevin Durant on the team together. Sheesh. Now, that's, we talk about parity. It's gone in that situation as well. Um, of course, this is if the Rockets say that they want to blow it up, and everything they've reported is that they don't want to blow it up. They want to continue to try to compete. So all of that is for nothing. Um, but it is, say, one surprise trade, and that would be a surprise because they told us they don't want to blow it up. Miles Turner is going to be in a lot of different things. And in this one, Charlotte just just continues to trade that third overall pick for bigs. Every one of these trades, it's like, here, here's number three and get us back a big. I do not like that. I'd rather keep that pick. The Clippers, I've seen this trade before, and I think this is a good trade for, for both sides. And let me explain that. The Clippers get uh, Ricky Rubio, and this was something that Kawhi Leonard said. They need a real point guard that can facilitate, do all of that. Cool. You get that at Ricky Rubio. He's one of the best facilitators in the NBA. And then the Suns get back a guy in, in Patrick Beverly who can be gritty, who can be in the locker room, getting these guys to care about defense again. And Landry Shaman is an off-screen shooter. And I, I believe in Devin Booker's playmaking long term that you don't really need another playmaker alongside him. I, I believe Devin Booker's that good as a playmaker. So maybe you're willing to give up Ricky Rubio to get back some grit and tenacity and 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 Patrick Beverly and get back more shooting and Landry Shamit. Um and as many second round picks as the Suns want. What if I just want all of them? Give me all of them. As many as you want. Give me all of them then. I do like this deal though. I saw this on Twitter and I was like, I don't hate that. If that trade happened today, I would think that both teams walk away thinking that they they want it. Then we have the Lakers retail for a repeat. Danny Green cools in 28 for Victor Oladipo. Again, as you can tell from this article, Victor Oladipo's real value is up in the air. Nobody really knows what his real value is at this moment. Personally, I see this trade and I think this is this is pennies for what Victor Oladipo can be. But again, when he came back, he didn't look amazing. So maybe it's not. Cal Kuzma doesn't look like a player that Indiana would want. He just doesn't really fit. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't fit with that thing. Danny Green definitely does. And the 28th pick is cool. But um, a lot of the other trades that are dealing with Victor Depot is a better package than this, is what I believe. The dark horse for Bradley Beal. Memphis Grizzlies. So they are getting Bradley Beal. They send out Gorgia Zhang, Dylan Brooks, Brandon Clark, and a 2022 unprotected first. Now, John Morant... Brandon, Bradley Beal backcourt sounds incredible. And you'll still have Jaron. And you'll still have Valanchunas. And whoever you want to put at that forward. I guess it's Kyle Anderson in this situation. Brandon Clark is not as young as a rookie. I think he's one of the older rookies. I think he's already like 23, 24. Um, but that don't really mean anything. He's really good. But Bradley Beal is amazing. I would be willing to give up that package for Bradley Beal. I would be willing to give up that package for Bradley Beal. Is this a good package in return for Bradley Beal is the question. And it might be. 2022 unprotected is a very, very fun pick to think about. Because by 2022, Bradley Beal will be on the last year of his deal, if I'm not mistaken. That's interesting. This is an interesting trade. I wouldn't say yes. I wouldn't say no to it either. But it's very, very interesting. Wizards fans will probably look at that and be really upset. And you know what? I can even see I can even see Memphis Grizzly fans looking at that and being upset because I'm sure a lot of them really do love Brandon Clark and, and Dylan Brooks. Those are two guys that came into the season and exceeded expectations. So I can understand them being like, we don't want to trade those guys. But a guy like Bradley Beal is ridiculous with John Morant. On paper, that looks amazing. Miami, the rare finals exchange. Cal Kuzma for Kendrick Nunn skipping that one i don't want to talk about that the answer to everything cal Lowry for eric bledsoe brooke lopez wait, 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 wait. <clears throat> let me read cal Lowry for eric bledsoe brooke lopez dante divincenzo 24 and a top three protected in 2023 oh my god that, is, that that's a package right there that's a package and a half for Cal Lowry. Cal Lowry is a very good NBA player. He's a very impactful NBA player. He, he makes all the winning plays, and that's what you want for a guy like Giannis. But that is a huge package. I'm going to say no if I'm the, the, the Bucks and just leave it at that. That is a huge, huge package for Cal Lowry. Next. Um, the ideal cat compliment, James Johnson 
he opts in his contract. That's 19th pick. Wait, 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 wait. So Aaron Gordon for James Johnson, 17, and then a pick swap for 2022. Aaron Gordon's a guy that's been rumored with the Timberwolves for a long time. He does have defensive upside. Again, I think he needs a he needs a change of scenery, and he has the opportunity to grow with this young core of Car Anthony Towns and D'Angelo Russell. I think it is a match made in heaven uh, for this package. Sure, why not? Why not? I just think every trade dealing with the Orlando Magic getting picks is a good trade, honestly, because they need to blow it up if you ask me. Next, ooh. Here's your defense, Stan Van Gundy. First of all, I don't like this trade already. Rudy Gobert for Lonzo, Jackson Hayes, 13, and Darius Miller. I do not like the idea of Rudy Gobert and Zion Williamson on the court together, so I'm going to say no. Zach Levine gets buckets in the garden. Zach Levine for number eight, Frank Nilakina and Dennis Smith Jr. I would pass on this. Um, and there's the Gucci Mane looking ref. He be, he be, pop, he be popping up in these videos often. Um, I would pass on this personally. But I can understand Bulls fans that would look at this and be like, okay, because Zach Levine is going to be on the last year of his contract very soon. And we don't know what his value is or what his priorities are. You know what I'm saying? Zach Levine may be like, man, this Chicago weather ain't it. I need to go back home. But I think he's from Seattle. So I need to go back to where I went to school. I need to go back to LA. And then he'll just go sign somewhere else. Um, if Ak really loves somebody at number eight, and that means giving up Zach Levine... I guess, but I also want to be a team that's competitive, and Zach Levine helps us be competitive every single night. So I don't know. Next, I, I would keep. I would rather keep Zach Levine. Next, we have one expensive point guard for another. So you trade in Chris Paul for Mike Conley, Ed Davis. Um, this is like a, a contract exchange. Mike Conley is going to be on the last year of his deal. I don't like that. I think you could probably get a better package for Chris Paul. I honestly do. You may be able to get a pick in, in a young asset, honestly. So I'm going to say no. Then we have the Orlando Magic. But this is a trade that they're going in. Oh, my God. Okay. So the Orlando Magic acquired Buddy Heald, Rashawn Holmes, and the 12th overall pick for Nikola Vucevic and 15. This is a lateral move. And a lateral move keeps the Orlando Magic as the 7th, 8th seed every single year. Pass. Orlando Magic, blow it up, please. Philly, paying up to save money. Mike Conley from the Jazz for Tobias Harris, Matisse Stiebel in 21. That's how bad of a contract Tobias Harris is, is that you, you're going to have to attach Matisse Stiebel, who's a very young and nice NBA player, in the 21st pick just to get him onto the, off, the, uh, off the books. That is something that I would not want to do, but it's probably something you're going to have to do long term if you want to get rid of Tobias Harris' contract. It's ridiculous, and I'd rather just keep him and hope that Doc Rivers can turn him into that player he was in L.A. a couple years ago. Next, we have Superstar Swap. I'm saying no right off rip. Devin Booker and Ben Simmons. Sure, it'll be cool to see on paper. But this will be a surprising trade for sure. But it's a trade that will not ever even really even be looked at to be happening, right? And what if it did? What if it did? Adding some splash. Trailblazers acquire Kyle. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Clay Thompson for cj zach collins is 16 clay thompson is an untouchable piece no thank you you don't break up the splash brothers you don't sacramento Queen, kings acquired john collins for marvin bagley number 12 in this year's draft um i do like john collins alongside trey young and i've asked this question on the channel before i don't understand why people throw john collins's name in the trade finder so much i just i think that he fits alongside trey young pretty well He's a role guy. He's a pick and pop guy. That that can be a nice duo for the future. I'm not trading him away from Marvin Bagley, who can't stay healthy, and just a 12th overall pick. I'd rather keep John Collins, and I'd rather pay John Collins because I think that I mean he's not done growing. He's like 21 years old. Why are we trading him away for a, a guy that can't stay healthy and just the 12th overall? I'm good. I'm passing. Uh, the Al Horford, Al Horford and Matisse Stiebel for Lamarcus and Patty Mills. No, th another situation where you're gonna have to pay a young asset to get off a bad contract. Lamarcus and Joel and B together sounds like a disgust. I don't want to see that whatsoever. Lamarcus is still good, don't get me wrong, but I think there can be a better pairing than Lamarcus and Joel and B on the court together at the same time. Pass. The OMG, I, I like this Trey for number one. Okay. The Tim, I'm sorry, I'm like losing my mind here. The Raptors get the first overall pick, and Jacob Evans, my fault, Jacob Evans, for OG and 29. 
you have to really believe in OG's upside to a to a whole new level than what he played for this season to trade number one for him. Because that's basically what this is. It's OG for number one. Jacob Evans don't really matter. The 29th pick at the end of the day won't, probably won't end up mattering. So this is like trading first overall pick for OG Ananobi. And though this year's first overall pick is not Zion, I'm going to keep saying that, it still should be able to get you a little bit more than that. OG is the perfect wing to have alongside for that team, 100%. But I don't know if I'm giving up the first overall pick for it. I don't know. I don't know. The Jazz find... The Jazz love finds a way. Okay. Mike Conley at 23 for Kevin Love. Sure, I'll do this trade if I'm the Cavaliers. And I'd honestly do this trade if I'm the Utah Jazz. I think this is a good trade. Um, Mike Conley's an expiring contract for the for the Cleveland Cavaliers fan. Even though that would mean you have three guards in the backcourt that deserve minutes. But whatever. Three small guards. Whatever. Uh, Kevin Love's contract is gone. You get a 23rd overall pick. And you can potentially hit on 23. Why not? Why not? And then lastly, the Wizards do the impossible. Doing the impossible. Vontae, Nicholas Batum. For John Wall and nine, um, I don't. I personally don't think that the Hornets are trading Vontae. But then again, they're a team that's like, let's let's try to make a push for the playoffs. And maybe John Wall, he's old, but he can still hoop. And we get number nine. No, please, please, Jordan, don't look at John Wall and think that this is gonna help you out. I just keep growing with Vontae. Keep growing Ravante in that draft pick, please. Do not try to go all in on something that you don't need to go all in for. Because what does John Wall raise your value to? Maybe a playoff team? I'm good on it. And now the, the NFL game. Somebody got a safety. Wow, that's crazy. Um, thank y'all so much for watching. Let me know what you think about these trades. Again, these are all my uh, subjective opinions. You may disagree. And that's completely okay. Let me know the team, the trade that was associated with your team. Let me know what you think about it. Because I might have liked it. You might have hated it. Your, your opinion is better than mine. Because that's the team you're watching every single night. Leave a like. Subscribe. I'm out.